Ladies and gentlemen, the world as we see it has known many challenges, many challenges throughout time. Never though in history it has faced so many challenges at the same time as it does now. So let's go back in history and reflect on this in this beautiful place. Imagine that the first footsteps of mankind on Earth were one and a half million years ago. 500,000 years ago, we invented fire. And throughout many ages, we lived like kind of nomads, developed ourselves, conquered nature at times, but we lived with nature and we coped with it. A great change in time came mid-18th century. And at that time, we called it progress. Progress, thinking we moved ahead. That progress was the Industrial Revolution. And in the first era of this Industrial Revolution, we started off with steam, invented electricity, then came oil and gas, we started to build big factories, and because of it, we were able soon to travel the globe. But we took what we needed along the way. So this Industrial Revolution brought many good things, and we all know of them. Life got more comfortable, many innovations were developed and many techniques, we could manufacture much more things, but it came with a price, and it actually came with a big price. Because as a result of this globalization, this way of living, we thought of things that were actually really counterproductive. Imagine we, in fact, invented the idea to produce food that is actually not nourishing, but in fact it kills us. It's very unhealthy. Think about large sugar and fat holding drinks and food that cause obesity around the globe. We invented that we could produce so many things with oil and gas that now we are faced, and it's been recently calculated, that we face climate change of not one and a half or two degrees, but of three or four or even more degrees. We accomplish that by now, one third of sweet water supplies is actually disappearing. But at the same time, imagine that a single T-shirt, which many of you are wearing at this time, needs 1,700 liters of water to produce. 1,700 liters for every single si simple T-shirt. And imagine that due to ever-growing world's population, by 2050, we need over 40% more water, almost 50% more food, etc., etc. So you can imagine things needed to change. Imagine that it's not the world that needs us. The world doesn't need us, and by now it can actually do without us. There's no real purpose of us being here anymore for the world. It's the other way around. And fortunately, and this event today is an illustration of this, we've come to realize that. Also, economically, there's no purpose in this business model of the world, as we could call it. If we look to economic numbers, which I often do, you can expect from a businesswoman like I am, and you take into account the global GDP, we use up actually 2.8% of our global GDP due to consequences of obesitas. 2.8%, imagine that. Climate change eats up a big chunk of our global GDP, and it's between 5 and 20% or even more if we don't take action. 
Natural disasters cause billions of dollars throughout the world, although we refuse often to recognize it's actually directly related to climate change. So, you know, being a businesswoman, if I look at the world and I look at it as, imagine, as a company, that company is almost bankrupt. If you were an investor, you definitely wouldn't invest in the world, nor in its people, because they treat it like this. Now, do we need to despair? We don't. Imagine that since the first footsteps of mankind 1.5 million years ago, our brain capacity, our ability to think has tripled. You could say we're three times smarter now as when we started out. We have technology, we have ICT, advanced technologies. We can actually achieve anything we imagine, as long as we collaborate and put our minds to it. So there's no need to despair, there's hope, but we need to act. We need to really take action together by saying we embrace these sustainable development goals is not going to do it. We need to collaborate and give it our absolute best shot because there's little time and a big task. So, a couple of years ago, when this realization spread out through the world, and luckily enough, we had the climate agreement in Paris, in that very same year, we got a br great breakthrough. And that breakthrough was the acknowledgement of the sustainable development goals, as was mentioned before. And now we can always talk about these sustainable development goals, but what does it really mean? It means that for the first time in history, people of over 193 countries around the world all said, we have a joint ambition, we have a joint purpose because we acknowledge we want to change the world for the better. And also we want to do it fast and at large scale. So these goals, I see them as a moral compass for the world and for each and every one of you here present today. A moral compass that can guide us to purpose-driven way of living, way of driving a company, or whatever your profession might be. Those goals are goals for 2030. Imagine that is very, very nearby, so little time for a big task. And often people say to me, well, these goals, well, great, it's all very ambitious to ban hunger and to strive for e equality, and for pr responsible production and consumption, etc. But think about this for a minute. Do we have a choice? I don't think so. It's a matter of simple civilization and morals. Because most of you probably do, and I want to be able to say that in 2030, no child is dying before its forced year of living because of barbarian living circumstances. Don't you think we want and need to be able to say in 2030 that every child on this planet has a fair chance of life? Don't you think we want to say in 2030 that we use the sun, the wind, the water, for energy, instead of taking resources for the same planet and using it against it, threatening the world with its own existence by using its resources. And it makes absolute sense because the sun, the wind and the water are there in abundance. There's no scarcity. That doesn't really exist. So this 2030 ambition is something that just must be achieved to come into a world where we actually all want to live in. 
And since 2016, we have been wanting to know where we stand at to achieve this. And so, the UN and related organizations did something very innovative. If you talk about technology, they used all small and big data around the world to be able to measure ourselves against those goals. And you're looking at the picture of the measurement of 2016 of OECD countries, and of course you will not be able to see every single country and every single SDGs because it's too small on the slide. But it's to give you an impression that even in the OECD countries, there's still a lot of work to be done. Otherwise, it would be all green, and it isn't. And even we are now here in the Netherlands, we lag behind in terms of renewable energy, beating climate change, and we even lag behind in getting an equal development in men and women in management positions. But of course, if we look at the picture of Sub-Saharan Africa, probably that makes you a bit quiet, doesn't it? Because that's life over there. And that makes it clear to us that our responsibility being a citizen, a business person, if you're in politics, in science, education, whatever role you are, our responsibility is more than our individual situation, our company walls, our city, our country, or even our continent. We have a global responsibility. Being a businesswoman, I study companies for a lot of the time. And this has tremendous meaning for companies around the world. Global companies, because they might have their headquarters in one company, but their supply chain reaches through the whole world. Small companies, because they start out, and knowing this, you have a responsibility. Every company. And never let anybody tell you that a company adapts a little bit and that we have to understand that it takes time, so that is the best they can do. No. What we need is companies that have this purpose. Purpose-driven companies are the future. They are our future. And actually, you could say, and you can say, you must say, that if companies don't add value to the solution of these sustainable development goals, they should simply cease to exist. And you can all think of companies that have products or services, or have a way of producing them that add no value to the SDGs, but only, only damage the world, or for the most part, damage the world. And having seen what you just saw, you know that's not good enough. So it's about purpose-driven companies, and it's about companies that thus have a positive impact on those SDGs and on the world. And those are the companies that will sustain. Companies that don't add value, regardless of what we all do here, they will cease to exist anyway, because in the near future, there's no economic model for that. So either transform quickly, start over at new, or disappear. That's what, is what will happen. Now, the good thing is that we have quite some good examples of companies that do this really well. There are scarce, it's still way too few companies, but they exist. And of course, the thing, first thing that comes to your mind is innovative startups that start for new, because they can go to the drawing board to design with a new start. But also, listed companies, quite large companies, we have that are really ultimately purpose-driven. Such a company, for instance, is Interface. And don't forget, carpet tiles, which is their product, is not by origin such a sustainable product. It uses many bad materials, and it uses, used a lot of oil and gas in the beginning. 
And Interface is a company that has a very strong moral compass. And then they said, we want to distantiate ourselves from this past. We don't want to be a part of the problem anymore. We want to be a part of the solution. And thus, they aimed for what they called Mission Zero. And now the thing is, because the fact they aimed for Mission Zero and they had such a straight objective, actually they went much faster than they had anticipated. And thus they could have a next ambition. And their next ambition, and they're working on it as I speak, is climate take back. Because they said, we know that in the world there's way too much carbon and we have to get rid of it. The same goes for plastics. And we can keep on seeing carbon as our enemy, but we can also embrace it and make it our friend. And thus, they invented a way to actually absorb carbon and make it into a resource for their carpets. And now they are cleaning up the mess, you could say. And they're not the only ones. There's a hospital in Mexico, and it's called Todas las Especialidades. And it has a front which can actually absorb the smog in the air. And being a front of a hospital, that's quite useful, you can imagine. And we'll have one in Rotterdam soon as well. All these are innovations with a big impact. There's other companies like this. For instance, DSM. And you see here a picture of a forward of Vaka Sabesma in my new book, The Trillion Dollar Ship, to which he collaborated. Um, I admire DSM and its leader, because only recently, a couple of months ago, Fiker personally presented to the press, but more importantly, to all its investors, that from now on, it's going to be a real purpose-driven company that only wants to bring into the market products that improve health, well-being, living. They want to bring about only solutions. And he had the courage on stage to say that they want to be a purpose-driven company. Imagine that is not easy. But that's the kind of examples we need, examples that make the transition go much faster. Because think about it, that's 69 of the world's biggest uh, economies are in fact corporations, so its power is huge. And it's huge for the bad, but it's also huge for the good. We are in an age and era of technology, and it's exciting, isn't it? All those new technologies that come about, small big data, robotics, drones, and artificial intelligence, ladies and gentlemen, soon has a way of learning that is much, much faster than humans can actually process. But think about what's the real purpose of technology. It is not that you have an iPhone you can ditch every year. It's not to have great gadgets. It's not to have even better sound television or whatever. OK, that's all nice, but that's not the purpose technology. The purpose of technology is to actually accelerate the transition to solving those SDGs, and it can. ICT and advanced technologies are the biggest power to accelerate this transition. And very, very many new entrepreneurs know this, and they use ICT and technology for good, but it's not mainstream at all. That is what we should use it for. So we should use technology to create apps and we do, but at little scale, to help smallholder farmers in South America. Because they get warned earlier on that there's bad weather coming up and they don't lose their harvest. We need solutions that we can monitor and improve our health. We need drones to bring medicine and, for instance, seed for agriculture to Africa so that we don't have to wait around for big investments in infrastructure, which we actually don't really need anymore. It's all there, but it must be deployed for good. And you don't need to be in the ICT sector for this, because each and every one of us can engage with technology as to grow your impact. I wrote this book, and it took three years of my life. And last night, somebody I worked with said, well, it was 
two years of drama, that is true. It comes with a price as well. But we researched a lot. And the good news is that we found that business for good is in fact good business. And there's a huge amount of opportunities if you engage with these sustainable development goals in a positive way. Because the world needs your solutions then. So, for instance, all kinds of electric uh, um, vehicles, like electric bikes for the city, all kinds of big data support where we can arrange the traffic throughout cities, all kinds of apps for health or agriculture in sub-Saharan countries, for instance. All these are opportunities, and it has been calculated that, in fact, it's a 12 trillion dollar opportunity. That's the number that is so big we can't grasp, of course. But it's new markets, and new markets mean new opportunities for everyone. And read up, get educated, and make sure you know mankind needs to educate itself. Education is the key to progress. Having said all this, think about how each and every one of you can actually contribute to this. And you can. And you must. You can't say, a little bit of my time I spent to this. Okay, you can choose one or two or three SDGs. You think you can have a great impact too. And the good thing is, impacting one means impacting another. But, we have only one planet. We might need seven planets for nine billion people, but we don't have it. We have only one planet, one beautiful planet. Almost bankrupt, but needs to be saved. And these sustainable development goals might be a big plan, a bold plan, but we need a bold plan. And there's only one plan, ladies and gentlemen, there's no plan B, because there's no planet B. There's only one. And remember what I said in the beginning. The world doesn't need us. We need the world. The world recuperated from everything. But it can't recuperate from us if we don't change. And it's nice to change, it's inspiring to change. And the future we all can create is a future that makes us much happier. Think about that for a little bit. And now, let's listen for a couple of minutes to that Earth, as we should do more often. Thank you very much. Some call me nature. Others call me mother nature. I've been here for over four and a half billion years. 22,500 times longer than you. I don't really need people, but people need me. Yes, your future depends on me. When I thrive, you thrive. When I falter, you falter. Or worse. But I've been here for eons. I have fed species greater than you, and I have starved species greater than you my oceans, my soil, my flowing streams, my forests. They all can take you or leave you. How you choose to live each day, whether you regard or disregard me, doesn't really matter to me. One way or the other, your actions will determine your fate, not mine. I am nature. I will go on. I am prepared to evolve. 
Are you? <laughs>